Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time or you're returning here, you are definitely welcome. Do not forget to like and subscribe below. Now, on this channel, I talk all things immigration and lifestyle. So, one thing I would like to share with you guys today is how I got my current job on LinkedIn. Now, if you've seen this video I did with Tammy where I talked about how to network with people, then you know that LinkedIn is probably the go-to place for professional networking when it comes to social app right okay so i currently work as a solutions architect and i've been in the same company for about two years now and i actually got that job on linkedin so let me tell you the story of how i got the job uh back then in nigeria in 2017 even before i got my pr approved even before i knew that okay i knew i was coming to canada but before i got my pr approved i just did my research and i'm like okay what role do i want to do and i just i knew that it had to be cloud related and i just loved the idea of a solutions architect so in terms of i'm like okay my dream role is to be a solutions architect i took my first certification in cloud computing which was uh, aws solutions architects that was in october 2017. the first thing i did after i took that certification i had passed was to go on my linkedin profile and update it as an acquired certification then and that was October 2017. Then in January 2018, I took another certification in the same cloud computing space. And that one was like AWS uh, DevOps uh, Developer Associates, right? So I took that second certification and I updated my LinkedIn again. At this point, I was already positioning myself for roles in Canada. It's not important for me to take certifications that won't be acknowledged or won't be recognized in Canada. So I was just trying to build up uh, those certifications on top of my resume and on top of my personal experience as well. So I took that one in January 2018, then I updated my resume. So come July 2018, when I moved to Canada, the first job I got was as a technology specialist. Now it wasn't the uh, dream role. So this is why I'm also trying to explain that I had my dream role. I was working towards it. It necessarily doesn't mean that that's the first job I would get in a land in Canada, but I was aware that it was going to contribute or add to my Canadian experience and it was important for me to get that Canadian experience as well. So I took that job. Even that job as well was through networking. It wasn't that I applied on the company website or anything. So I started working there in August 2018, right? I'm just trying to give you the timeline so you understand how everything went. So it, it was a build up for me in the sense that the role required some uh, cloud knowledge or required some certifications and also required like hands-on experience so it wasn't like i want the role i changed my title to it and i can just apply for anything i had to build up on it right from 2017 before i even started working in that dream role in 2019 so come january 2019 i'm like okay i've been in my old job for four months it's time for me to improve myself so i took the third certification now this is my third certification in the same cloud computing space and this one was aws sysops now i took that exam on the 31st of january right so i took it on the 31st of january and then i updated my linkedin 2nd of february to say now i have another certification in that same cloud computing space and that's like the third certification from that cloud provider. When I did that, it was uh, in two weeks, somebody from that company or from the dream company reached out to me and said, okay, blessing, I've been uh, following you or uh, I see your profile, I see that you have the certifications and I would like to schedule an interview with you for the same role, solutions architects role. So you can see that I never applied to the company. I never checked um, online to see what kind of uh, job openings they had because in my head i'm like i don't even think i'm ready to go to these companies i don't think i have enough work experience or enough exposure to get into that company so i wasn't i was selling myself short but i'm like let me just keep adding to my linkedin profile and if anyone is searching for a solutions architect in canada if they type it uh my profile or my name should come up top list or just something like that so that was what happened and then the recruiter reached out she sent me the jd sent me the job the job title she was like okay do you uh let's let's have a conversation about it uh she called me we talked about the role and i'm like okay i think i would like to give you a shot and then i interviewed and that was how i got into my current role as a solutions architect now i've actually heard uh conversations of people saying things like uh you should be able to do whatever you want on linkedin now i'm not saying that if you have to show or if you want to celebrate your wedding anniversary or you want to celebrate celebrate your birthdays 
or uh, you bought a new car and you want to post it on LinkedIn, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. But you already have Instagram, you have Snapchat for that. So you should actually try to keep your LinkedIn as professional as possible. LinkedIn is like the one place that gives you access to almost anyone in any stage uh, professionally. So you have access to DPs, uh, CEOs, CIOs, CTOs, wherever you want in your field, you have access to them on LinkedIn. And then um, one thing that helped me was that before now, uh, on my LinkedIn profile, I actually used to just follow cloud related articles and also followed uh, cloud computing news and all this. Thing. So I was constantly uh, checking and following those news. So if you were to open my profile back then, that's why I said back then, because right now I don't even know what I'm liking on LinkedIn anymore. It's just so random. But back then in uh, 2017, 2018, if you check my updates and um, my posts, you just that okay, I left a comment on a cloud computing post or I left a comment on a new service in cloud computing or something that has to do with uh, architecting or DevOps or automation or CNCD pipeline. If I was sending requests to anyone on LinkedIn, it would show them, okay, what has Blessing been up to? And they can see that, okay, she's actually in this field and she has been contributing to that as well. And then another thing that was really, really helpful for me was that uh, any company, I still do it to now, any company that I sort of uh, envision myself that I'm like, okay, I, it wouldn't be bad to work in this company or I like this company. I go on LinkedIn, I look for people that do the role that I want, one. I look for recruiters in that role or recruiters in that company. And I also look for the, like, the team leads, the directors, the VPs, and I connect with all of them. So, for example, this same, in the job that I do now, uh, I was like, okay, I really like the idea of this cloud provider. I really like what they do. I just connected with a, a bunch of recruiters. I don't know if they recruit in the role that I want or if you recruit in the city that I want, I just want to be able to connect with them because uh, if another recruiter from the same company is searching on LinkedIn uh, for people and trying to headhunt for someone because I'm connected to a recruiter, another recruiter, it will show me a second connection or third connection. And that's how LinkedIn works. It's just like a graph of, I know this process, I'm going to uh, show you uh, who they are connected to or who they are not connected to, second connection, third connection, and all of those things. So that helped me. And like I said, what I currently do, like right now, I just, there, there was a period in my life, I think it was like early 2020 or mid 2020. I'm like, I think I was going to consulting. I don't know what that means, but I think I like the idea of consulting. So I went on LinkedIn and I went to look for people working in McKinsey, um, McKinsey, Deloitte, PwC, um, just all of those big four consulting firms and I connected with most people there like I connected with their recruiters and VPs their head of departments all those things I don't know if I would ever go into consulting but I'm like when that time comes I've already made that connection on LinkedIn now don't get me wrong because you've connected with someone on LinkedIn doesn't necessarily mean you have them in your pocket that's not even thinking it's just that you have them in your network and they can see how your career has been progressing so if someone connects with me on LinkedIn let's say the head of um, the SVP of uh, technology in a company, right? And then uh, we're both connected. If let's say I switch jobs or uh, I get a promotion or I go up or I get another suspicion or I write a blog post or I just do something technology-wise, they get to see. So that's why it's important to connect with people. Like I said, uh, after connecting with people from the consulting firm, uh, there was one day I just sat down and I'm like, okay, Netflix, Google, YouTube, what that company did I do? Microsoft, and I just connected with everybody from from um, everybody that I saw on LinkedIn, and I just sent them invites. I didn't even put a personal touch to it because I'm like, I don't know where my next career phase or kind of career stage is going to be, but I just want you guys in my circle and you can see my career progression. So when that time comes, I know that I can easily reach out to you to say, okay, uh, I've been watching your uh, post on LinkedIn. I've been seeing how your team has been doing fantastic. Do you have um, do you have a headcount or do you have space to take on someone new or can you just tell me more about your team? Things like that are how you can connect on LinkedIn as well. So yes, uh, stop posting the new car that you acquired. Stop posting your birthdays on LinkedIn. Stop posting your wedding anniversary. That's just my own personal preference and my personal advice. I feel like you can se segregate and do all of those things on Instagram, but keep your LinkedIn as professional as possible and see it as a way that you're trying to sell yourself and portray 
uh, your market or your brand. So LinkedIn is your professional brand and you want to keep it as professional as possible. I hope you guys actually find this video useful and I hope that you actually start to clean up your LinkedIn. Don't be like me and be liking things about how bad Nigeria is or how Buhari is not doing something nice. I don't know. I don't know why I do that on my LinkedIn, but I've actually stopped. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!